Tacha hao, I'm Gabi from Ray Studios and today I'm going to be reviewing the Brighton Star 7.5mm f2.8 First, let's unbox it So here is the box, quite nice, so let's open it It's open kind of like a chest drawer, which is kind of nice And inside we have another box with a cleaning clothes, a microfiber, and just to clean your lens A guarantee card in English and the instruction manuals, which is also in English, but let's be honest, who needs the instruction manual for a fully manual lens? And then you can see the lens, which is very well protected. Let's get this out of the box and let's take a closer look. Now, the, the construction of this lens is absolutely amazing, it's all metal. Lens with this metal, the cap is metal. Uh, basically, it's all metal, uh, except for the rear cap that is plastic, obviously, but the, the mount. Take a guess, metal. The the focus ring and the aperture ring both stands uh, battery smooth. Uh, it's super smooth, really. It's a pleasure to turn these rings, and it have a relatively uh, big angle for turning. It's more like a like a hundred degree, which for a fish eye is a bit too much. The aperture is the click, which could be pretty good for some filmmakers, and you go from f 2.8 to f 22. So now let's take a look on how this may look while it's mounted on, on a camera. In this case, I'm gonna bring my Sony A6400. I'm gonna get rid of the kit lens and I'm gonna mount this lens. That, to be fair, is more or less the same size as the kit lens. Uh, you can see it's really, really tiny. You gotta be careful with the, with the front element of this lens, which is really uh, popping out of, of the lens. Uh, the lens was, should offer some protection, but not that much. As you can see next to the kit lens how small it is. It's almost about the same size. Really, really tiny. Okay, so this lens is fully manual, means the, the aperture is manual, the focusing is manual, so if you're not used to these kind of lenses, it, there is a bit of a learning curve, but to be perfectly fair, if you are going to start shooting manual, this might be the perfect lens because pretty much everything is on focus. You put it to infinite and anything that is like about two meters or farther is going to be on focus. It's just that simple. Especially if you, you bring the aperture to like a, something like f5 or f4, that's it. It's all in focus. So you don't need to really pay too much attention to the, to the focusing. The aperture is the same. Um, you don't move it all that much for either video or photography. There is no IS, of course, there is no any kind of stabilization on a fully manual lens, but because it's so wide, you don't need one. So when you're shooting video, you're not going to be needing any stabilization. <coughs> so, uh, this lens is only for mirrorless crop sensor cameras. Uh, my copy, as you can see, for the Sony um, A6000 series cameras and uh, there is also kind of available in Canon EOS M and Fuji X. Now, let's take a look at some samples and see how this lens performs. The one thing that really strikes me about this lens are colors and, and the general feel of the, of the photos. Just like all the other Brighton lenses, uh, Brighton Star lenses that I review on this channel, colors is the first thing that it comes to mind when, when I um, talk about this brand. The, just the images, it just looks nice simple as that. Um, you can see that the, the, this is a fisheye lens, but even so it's a fisheye lens, it's rectilinear, and besides being rectilinear, there isn't that much distortion. There is a angle of view of like a, 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 about 170 degrees, which is massive, it's kind of like a GoPro. But you can see that the distortion isn't that crazy, and, and the image quality is pretty damn good. When you shoot at f2.8, so you're wide open, you will see just a little bit of softness at the very edge of the corners. So that's pretty understandable. For a fisheye lens, uh, I think the performance is actually excellent. Um, there is also some vignetting, but like I say, for a fisheye lens that opens at f2.8, that's very, very impressive. But when you step it down, that vignetting gets pushed to the very, very edge of the corner and you step to f8, that vignette is pretty much gone. The same for the sharpness. It, it kind of like, when you stop it down, f5.6, f8, well, that sharpness is, is pretty much everywhere. I mean, the corners, the very, very, very edge of the corners might still be a little bit soft, especially compared to the center, which is razor sharp. But yeah, you have incredible resolution all across the frame. 
uh, when it comes to flare, it's actually pretty good performance. I noticed there is some very strange kind of flare when shooting directly into the sun, which probably you shouldn't do most of the time, but yeah, I noticed there is some flare every now and then on a, a strange kind of patterns, but most of the time you won't see any flare, which is also excellent. Now, at this point you may be wondering how does this compare with something like the Seven Artisans, because you're like, Brighton Star Who, this company is pretty new, and they're trying to do excellent lenses. So they're trying to do what is already on the market, but they try to make it better. Did they succeed at it? In my opinion, yes. So I'm gonna talk uh, a few details that make this lens um, a little bit more special. First, without showing you <laughs> the Seven Artisan lens, I'll just show you the cap. This looks like the cap of a bottle of Coca-Cola. It's like it's plastic, looks cheap. This aluminum. You can see the difference, it's, it's massive. Let's see if I can show you right there. So there is a big difference right there. Here is the Seven Artisan lens, which is actually pretty good. It's, it's a lens that I love. It's one of my favorite lenses from Seven Artisans. I've been using it for like a really long time. Uh, I love shooting video with it because every now and then you get this like crazy kind of look and feel and I just like to throw a fish eye lens every now and then on my videos just to like create that crazy look um, so they're both actually excellent when it comes to image quality they're both really good you can barely tell them apart I feel like the colors are a little bit better with the brightness star that with the seven artists and sharpness is almost equal if I have to get the advantage maybe I'll give it to the seven artisans by a hair like by very little uh, when it comes to lens flare Again, they're very similar. I guess this shows a little bit less uh, uh, lens flare, but when it does, it's kind of weird. This one has more lens flare, but it's, it's kind of like on a more normal kind of pattern coming through the middle and down. And this kind of shows in the corner, like on a strange pattern already. When it comes to the build quality, there are some little details. Let me see if I can show you. The seven artisans, let me see if this can focus. Here we go. On the focus ring, have some screws. I don't know why it does that, but in the case of this lens, it's just flawless. There are no screws on the focus rings or the aperture, like the Seven Artisans. That looks kind of weird. I never seen like there are screws, screws. There's another screw here, another screw here. This, that's really weird. Um, it's, it's not bad. I mean, it's also metal, except for the cap that looks very cheap. Um, <clears throat> Generally speaking, there isn't a huge difference between these two, especially when it comes to image quality, but I give a little advantage to the Brighton Star and also in the build quality. And it's also, if I'm not mistaken, this is going to be um, a little bit cheaper than the Seven Artisans, so that's another great advantage, price. So there you have, in the conclusion is, is like, I really love this lens. I think I might be selling this one very soon and I'm gonna start shooting with this one. So I hope you like this review. If you do, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. That would help me a lot if you do. And I'll see you on the next video.